On the second day, the heads of fathers' houses of all the people, with the priests and the Levites, came together to Ezra the scribe, in order to study the words of the law. And they found it written in the law that the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the sons of Israel should dwell in booths during the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their towns and in Jerusalem, go out to the hills and bring branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees to make booths, as it is written. So the people went out and brought them and made booths for themselves, each on his roof, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the square at the water gate, and in the square at the gate of Ephraim. And all the assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made booths and dwelt in the booths. For from the days of Jeshua the son of Nun, to the day the sons of Israel had not done so. And there was very great rejoicing. And day by day, from the first day to the last, he read from the book of the law of God. They kept the feast seven days, and on the eighth day there was a solemn assembly, according to the ordinance. Now on the twenty-fourth day of this month, the sons of Israel were assembled with fasting and in sackcloth, and with earth upon their heads. And the Israelites separated themselves from all foreigners, and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for a fourth of the day. For another fourth of it, they made confession and worshipped the Lord their God. Upon the stairs of the Levites stood Jeshua, Bani, Kadmiel, Shebaniah, Buni, Sherebiah, Bani, and Chinani. And they cried with a loud voice to the Lord their God. Then the Levites, Jeshua, Kadmiel, Bani, Hashbaniah, Sherebiah, Hodiah, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. And Ezra said, You are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. And you preserve all of them. And the host of heaven worships you. You are the Lord, the God who chose Abram and brought him forth out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. And you found his heart faithful before you, and made with him the covenant to give to his descendants the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, and the Girgashite. And you have fulfilled your promise, for you are righteous. And you saw the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, and heard their cry at the Red Sea, and performed signs and wonders against Pharaoh and all his servants and all the people of his land. For you knew that they acted insolently against our fathers, and you got yourself a name, as it is to this day. And you divided the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on dry land, and you cast their pursuers into the depths, as a stone into mighty waters. By a pillar of cloud you led them in the day, and by a pillar of fire in the night, to light for them the way in which they should go. You came down upon Mount Sinai, and spoke with them from heaven, and gave them right ordinances and true laws, good statutes and commandments. And you made known to them your holy Sabbath, and commanded them commandments and statutes, and a law by Moses your servant. You gave them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought forth water for them from the rock for their thirst, and you told them to go and to possess the land which you had sworn to give them. But they and our fathers acted presumptuously, and stiffened their neck, and did not obey your commandments. They refused to obey, and were not mindful of the wonders which you performed among them. But they stiffened their neck, and appointed a leader, to return to their bondage in Egypt. But you are a God ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in mercy, and did not forsake them. Even when they had made for themselves a molten calf and said, This is your God who brought you up out of Egypt, and had committed great blasphemies, you and your great mercies did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud which led them in the way did not depart from them by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, which lighted for them the way by which they should go. You gave your good spirit to instruct them, and did not withhold your manna from their mouth, and gave them water for their thirst. Forty years you sustained them in the wilderness, and they lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. And you gave them kingdoms and peoples, and allotted to them every corner. So they took possession of the land of Sihon king of Heshbon, and the land of Og king of Bashan. You multiplied their descendants as the stars of heaven, 
and you brought them into the land which you had told their fathers to enter and possess. So the descendants went in and possessed the land, and you subdued before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and gave them into their hands, with their kings and the peoples of the land, that they might do with them as they would. And they captured fortified cities and a rich land, and took possession of houses full of all good things, cisterns hewn out, vineyards, olive orchards, and fruit trees in abundance. So they ate and were filled, and became fat and delighted themselves in your great goodness. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against you, and cast your law behind their back, and killed your prophets, who had warned them in order to turn them back to you. And they committed great blasphemies. Therefore you gave them into the hand of their enemies, who made them suffer. And in the time of their suffering, they cried to you, and you heard them from heaven. And according to your great mercies, you gave them saviors, who saved them from the hand of their enemies. But after they had rest, they did evil again before you, and you abandoned them to the hand of their enemies, so that they had dominion over them. Yet when they turned and cried to you, you heard from heaven, and many times you delivered them according to your mercies. And you warned them in order to turn them back to your law. Yet they acted presumptuously and did not obey your commandments, but sinned against your ordinances, by the observance of which a man shall live, and turned a stubborn shoulder, and stiffened their neck, and would not obey. Many years you bore with them, and warned them by your spirit, through your prophets, yet they would not give ear. Therefore you gave them into the hand of the peoples of the lands. Nevertheless, in your great mercies, you did not make an end of them, or forsake them, for you are a gracious and merciful God. Now therefore, our God, the great and mighty and awesome God, who keep covenant and mercy, let not all the hardships seem little to you that has come upon us, upon our kings, our princes, our priests, our prophets, our fathers, and all your people, since the time of the kings of Assyria until this day. Yet you have been just in all that has come upon us, for you have dealt faithfully, and we have acted wickedly. Our kings, our princes, our priests, and our fathers have not kept your law or heeded your commandments and your warnings which you gave them. They did not serve you in their kingdom, and in your great goodness which you gave them, and in all the large and rich land which you set before them. And they did not turn from their wicked works. Behold, we are slaves this day, in the land that you gave to our fathers to enjoy its fruit and its good gifts. Behold, we are slaves. And its rich yield goes to the kings whom you have set over us because of our sins. They have power also over our bodies and our cattle at their pleasure and we are in great distress. Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a man who is perverse in his speech and is a fool. It is not good for a man to be without knowledge, and he who makes haste with his feet misses his way. When a man's folly brings his way to ruin, his heart rages against the Lord. Wealth brings many new friends, but a poor man is deserted by his friend. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who utters lies will not escape. Many seek the favor of a generous man, and every one is a friend to a man who gives gifts. All a poor man's brothers hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursues them with words, but does not have them. He who gets wisdom loves himself. He who keeps understanding will prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who utters lies will perish. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury, much less for a slave to rule over princes. Good sense makes a man slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. A king's wrath is like the growing of a lion, but his favor is like dew upon the grass. A foolish son is ruined to his father, and a wife's quarreling is a continual dripping of rain. House and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I think myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa. I am to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews, because you are especially familiar with all customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, spent from the beginning among my own nation and at Jerusalem, is known by all the Jews. They have known for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that according to the strictest party of our religion, I have lived as a Pharisee, and now I stand here on trial for hope in the promise made by God to our fathers, to which our twelve tribes hope to attain, 
as they earnestly worship night and day. And for this I hope I am accused by Jews, O king. Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and I did so in Jerusalem. I not only shut up many of the saints in prison by authority from the chief priests, but when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them in all the synagogues and tried to make them blaspheme. And in raging fury against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Thus I journeyed to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining round me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It hurts you to kick against the goats. And I said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and bear witness to the things in which you have seen me, and to those in which I will appear to you, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles, to whom I send you to open their eyes, that they may turn from the darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Wherefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those at Damascus, then at Jerusalem, and throughout all the country of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, and perform deeds worthy of their repentance. For this reason the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day I have had the help that comes from God, and so I stand here testifying both to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass, that the Christ must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to the people and to the Gentiles. It's hard for us to fathom how the God of the universe can be both a righteous and just judge who hates sin, and at the same time the God of loving kindness who bestows abundant mercy on his repentant children. Ezra's prayer on the people's behalf does an amazing job of comparing the continual mercy of God and the repeated failures of his people. Ezra recounts, Our fathers acted presumptuously and stiffened their neck and did not obey your commandments. But God blesses them with his presence, with manna from heaven, and with the promised land. When they finally enter into the land, however, they cast God's law behind their back. In sum, God has dealt faithfully and the people have acted wickedly. St. Paul deals with a similar dichotomy in his own testimony, since he had been a zealous Jewish prosecutor of the early Christians and then does an about-face when he has a vision of Jesus. Once we know how broken and sinful we are, we realize how great God's mercy must be, that he is willing to reach out and save us. How does God's perfect mercy resolve your imperfection?